This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brenda Braxton. As the pandemic starts to wind down in the U.S., news from the CDC marks a major turning point. The CDC now says it's safe for fully vaccinated people not to wear a mask outdoors or indoors. Catherine Cook looks at how Oregon and Washington are handling the change. It's vaxxed or masked. President Biden Thursday tweeting out the heart of new recommendations by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC says fully vaccinated people no longer have to wear a mask or physically distance inside or out. There are some exceptions. Fully vaccinated people should still wear masks on public transportation in healthcare settings or at a business that requires them. Grocery stores, New Seasons, Fred Meyer and QFC tell KGW they will, for now, continue requiring shoppers and employees to wear masks. A Fred Meyer spokesperson said as an incentive, they're offering employees $100 to get vaccinated. For many people, the biggest incentive now is not having to wear a mask. But others say they're good keeping it on for now. I mean, that's that's good news, you know, for people who are vaccinated and stuff like that. I mean, I'm going to still wear my mask just because, you know, I mean, I just found out about it. I don't really care. Uh, I'm aware. I know I got to wear a mask on the bus and stuff like that. So I think it's uh, much safer to have a mask until India and Brazil, uh, because there's variants and things can recirculate around. Others fear unvaccinated anti-maskers will take advantage of the honor system. I think that would cause problems in regards to people saying they're vaccinated when they're not to get around mask mandates. Uh, the way people were pretending they had like government cards that said they were disabled, that meant they didn't have to wear a mask. The CDC is recommending people with compromised immune systems talk with their doctors before going mask free. If people want to save lives, we'll be there for them. Hours after the CDC's announcement, a maskless Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced he expects his state will fully reopen by the end of June. He said it could happen sooner, depending on when 70% of people 16 and older get at least one shot. They're at 57% now. now. There's a lot of really good incentives for getting this vaccine. One, you might not die. Two, someone you love might not die. Three, someone you love may not end up in the hospital. Or you now can go out without a mask. Oregon Governor Kate Brown said starting Thursday, Oregon would also follow the CDC's guidance. She said students and teachers will still need to wear masks this school year. And she said new state recommendations are coming soon. In the coming days, the Oregon Health Authority will be providing updated guidance for businesses, employers, and others to allow the option of lifting mask and physical distancing requirements after verifying vaccination status. It's a lot to take in on a day many have been waiting for. Katherine Cook, KGW News. The Oregon Health Authority had good news this morning. Oregon is seeing a decrease in cases after six weeks of increasing numbers. Last week, the state saw a 10% decrease from the week before and hospitalizations are flattening. There are still more than 300 people in Oregon hospitals with COVID, but those numbers aren't increasing as dramatically as they were just a few weeks ago. The state epidemiologist, Dr. Dean Seidlinger, talked about the rate at which the virus is spreading. He said models show we'll continue to see a drop in case numbers, especially as more people get vaccinated. Okay, let's check in with Rod for your first look at the weather. And wow, what a weekend shaping up to be spectacular. Yeah, more basically more of the same. I think a touch warmer than we've been in the, in the coming days. This is the visible satellite picture. It's got a good old fashioned black map background, but everything you're looking at is from the satellite in space, basically taking a snapshot, just an old fashioned camera, if you will. So this right here, the kind of spotty nature, these are cumulus clouds that are building up over the central Oregon Cascades and over uh, into central Oregon. There is that chance, remember, of a spotty thunderstorm popping. So we're watching that. This, of course, is the old marine layer. It, it has started to back off, but only in a few spots. Uh, and we are thinking most of the coast still has a good chance to get some sun developing this afternoon. Cannon Beach right now is still very socked in. Uh, there you can see well, one person driving on the beach there and 
Other people just taking a walk. 51 degrees is the current number. Now you get just inland, and boy, we are clear in Portland, clear over Salem. And just south of Salem, you find uh, Willamette Valley Vineyards high up on the hill. This is their camera there, and that's beautiful. Portland is at 69. We should hit 80 today, which we did two days ago. And it's still about 73, 8 o'clock. Okay, future cast to pinpoint a thunderstorm chance in the mountains later today and also that rain chance for next week. What's the latest? That's on my seven-day forecast. We'll see you then. Thank you, Rod. More gun violence in Portland. Early this morning, someone shot a newspaper delivery driver in northeast Portland. Police say just after 4 a.m., someone fired through the windshield of the driver's unmarked van. He was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Police say his injuries are serious, but not life-threatening. This happened at Northeast 44th and Shaver. Police say the suspect fired from another car and then left the scene. If any neighbors saw what happened or have surveillance video in the area, they're asked to contact Portland Police. We have updates now on a few big stories we've been following. First, the police chase and the shootout in Marion County we told you about yesterday. Officers arrested Kenneth Pedden, who is accused of kidnapping a 17-year-old. That's what led to the chase and shootout, which eventually ended on Highway 214 near Silverton. The teenager is in the hospital today with life-threatening injuries. Police say Pedden also shot a man in Jervis before the kidnapping. His condition is unknown. And a sad update to the search for a missing man in Portland. Police confirmed Michael Watts was found dead in the Willamette River. The Eugene man was a performer who went by the stage name Freddie Hollywood. He was last seen on May 1st when he was in Portland to perform at CeCe Slaughter's nightclub. Portland police say they're still trying to figure out what happened to Watts and the cause of his death. Gresham police arrested a driver wanted in connection with a deadly crash back in March. Cameron King is accused of hitting a woman walking with her two daughters. One of the girls died. King faces charges of criminally negligent homicide. The mom reported the car that hit her was speeding and then jumped the curb. Well, the third in a series of improvements to the Max Blue Line kicks off this weekend, which means commuters should plan for delays. Chris McGinnis has more on the impact. For nine days, starting Saturday, TriMet will be ripping up and replacing old rails and rail ties that in most cases are as old as the Blue Line itself. So with this project, we'll be replacing uh, about 2,600 feet of curved rail. And this rail has been in place uh, for more than 30 years now. TriMet is also the first transit agency on the West Coast to use a more modern style concrete rail tie. They mimic wooden ties so they can be replaced interchangeably with ties that still have life left in them. That's a time saver for maintenance. These new concrete rail ties that are encased in silicone, um, it allows us a lot more flexibility in where we can use them. And because they're made out of concrete, they're also more, more durable. The service disruption starts here at Northeast 7th Avenue and goes all the way out to the Gateway Transit Center where crews will replace this 30-year-old rail crossing. Much like they did last month on the south side. During the work, shuttle buses will serve all six stops in the work zone, so riders of the blue, red, and green lines be prepared to add at least 30 minutes to your daily commute. With 40 contractors and subs and 20 TriMet employees working round the clock, they expect to have regular service resuming in time for the Monday morning commute on May 24th. In Northeast Portland, Chris McGinnis. KGW News. And another closure to be aware of this weekend. The Hawthorne Bridge will close at 8 o'clock tonight until at least 8 a.m. Sunday. It'll be closed to both drivers and pedestrians. Crews are installing new signals on the bridge. This is part of that big project on Southwest NATO Parkway.